Good morning to you in Washington, D.C. Allow me first to thank Mr. Ahmed Kubba for inviting me to join you at the National Press Club at this important endeavor of a global alliance against ISIS and al-Nusra. And allow me also to thank Mr. Ghassan Mansour and Mr. Haider Haddad for making their best to make this event take place. At the outset, I would like first to question with you uh, two of the most important terminologies that had been circulated for the last five years in corporate media before we start our discussion uh, of the topic. Uh, the two terms are armed opposition and moderate armed opposition. And I would like to ask all of you, Your Excellencies, did you ever hear of an armed opposition in any country in the world? Um, to my knowledge, opposition is political opposition. But once arms are being taken, killing is being perpetrated, massacres are being done against people, it's no longer an opposition. It is a terrorist uh, movement that kills and destroys. This leads me to question the false narrative that has been circulated also all over the world, but particularly in Western countries about events in Syria. Since March 2011, uh, Al Jazeera that is owned and funded by Qatar and Al Arabiya TV, that's owned and funded by Saudi Arabia, had been the major source of information about Syria. Although, to your information, both Al Jazeera and Al Arabiya withdrew their correspondence right from the very first two months of the war in Syria, and they started to rely on what they called eyewitnesses. The same thing applies to the human right, to the Observatory for Human Rights, which also has been a major source for Western media. I don't know how many of you know that only one person, Rami Abdurrahman, who lives in Coventry, England, is the one who is providing all this information about Syria. Thus, uh, what I'm trying to say is that the Western media uh, whether in advertently or deliberately, it truly ignored what was happening in Syria throughout these five years and relied on regional partners and regional outlets who are essential in targeting Syria. And thus, I feel that the false narrative and the media has been used uh, by our adversaries in the region in order to misinform Western audiences. And therefore, uh, how can Western people know what's going on in Syria? And how can they question their governments about their stand towards Syria? However, living through the thin and thick of all what has happened in Syria for the last five years, uh, and living through all the problems and all the pain we have reached a few important conclusions, which I would like to share with you this morning. A few important conclusions about combating terrorism and the best way to combat terrorism, as this is the theme uh, of this event. During five years of this war in Syria, we discovered that terrorism, there's nothing called terrorism that falls from space. Terrorism, to our knowledge now, is adopted by certain countries or certain powers or certain parties. Terrorists in Syria have support of countries in the region and indeed of some international powers. There are countries speaking out against terrorism, but in reality, facilitating the arrival of terrorists providing armaments and providing money for these terrorists. Although 
there are understanding being reached in Geneva and Vienna, and the, although there are Security Council resolutions which call for combating and undermining terrorism, but these have not been implemented. However, the phenomena of terrorism still lacks a clear definition, and I would like to remind all of you that Syria had been struck by terrorism before, in 1979 till 1982, and in the aftermath of that very difficult period, the Syrian government tried its best to call upon international community to reach an, a definition of terrorism and to make an alliance of international powers against terrorism. But all the calls of the Syrian government to define terrorism went unheeded, and there were no listening ears to all what we were saying. We renewed the invitation after the events of 9-11 and before the wars on Afghanistan and Iraq for the international community to define terrorism and make one strong stand against terrorism, but we were not able to do so. However, on December 17, 2015, Security Council resolution reached a, a Security Council reached a resolution 2253, uh, which calls uh, upon countries to stop facilitating, arming, or financing terrorism. Within 24 hours, it reached another resolution, which is 2254, which calls for a political solution uh, in Syria. However, the resolution 2253, which was taken under Chapter 7, is hardly if ever mentioned, even by the United Nations or by the countries who are trying, supposedly, to reach a political solution in Syria. But a political solution in Syria cannot be reached without addressing the elements that led to this situation, which are terrorist elements led, led by ISIS and by Jabhat al-Nusra. The government of Syrian Arab Republic had been cooperative with all international efforts since General Dabi, then Kofi Annan, then Lakhdar Ibrahimi, then Stephen de Mastura, in order to reach a political solution in Syria. But the fact of the matter is, the regional parties, Turkey, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia, are facilitating financing and arming terrorism in, in Syria, and unfortunately, international powers, including U.S. and Russia, do not seem to be able to put a, an end to this um, financing and arming and facilitating terrorism into Syria. If you imagine Syria without the 860 kilometers borders with Turkey, it would have been impossible to have such a war on Syria because all the terrorists, almost all the terrorists came to us through the Turkish border. However, now we come to the resolution 2254 and the will of the Russian and the Americans to try and uh, implement this re the resolution. Unfortunately, as I said, the regional partners do not want this resolution to be implemented. And the United States, for some reason or another, does not seem to be able to restrain its partners in the region from financing and facilitating terrorism into Syria. Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey work to sabotage the Geneva talks and to destroy the fragile truce in effect since the end of February 2016, at Ankara's insistence that Riyadh-based opposition withdrew from the talks, and military groups allied to Turkey began a fierce shelling campaign on the government's held part of Aleppo. Turkey also injecting over, injected over 8,000 terrorists into the northern part of Syria and into Aleppo in the last two months. And unfortunately, they perpetrated massacre there and everywhere. Between now and then, we hear some good statements from Western officials, such as what Joe Biden said, the Vice President Biden, who said in 2014, and I quote, the Turks, the Saudis, the Emirates, etc., 
What were they doing? They were so determined to take down President, President Bashar al-Assad and essentially have a proxy, Sunni Shia war. What did they do? They poured hundreds of millions of dollars and thousands of tons of weapons into anyone who would fight against Assad. He also said that Turkey admitted it had led too many foreign fighters across its borders into Syria. These politics ended up helping militants linked to Al-Qaeda, between brackets, Al-Nusra, and ultimately ISIS, Biden explained. Uh, end of quote. Of course, afterwards, Vice President apologized for saying that, but actually he said the truth about what is happening in Syria. I don't think we would like American officials to wait for their memoirs to write the truth. We would love American officials to say the truth to their people and to the world about what's happening in our countries because covering the truth is costing us blood, people, lives, history, culture, identity. This is what's costing us. It is not an, an easy matter. Anyway, um, the war, what the United States decided to bring together is the international coalition of 60 countries. You all, all of you know that this has happened about two years ago. Unfortunately, the United States was not able to strike a terrorist or was not willing. It's not for me to tell. But when terrorists drive over 200 kilometers at the desert in order to destroy the city of Palmyra, we can't believe that American satellites didn't see these terrorists in a flat desert arriving to Palmyra and destroying Palmyra without hitting them and without doing anything to prevent them from doing so. While when the Russians' planes came, they struck at the trucks that are transferring oil from the north and east of Syria to Turkey and to Europe, they discovered where terrorists are and they struck them. And actually, with, with the Syrian Arab army, with the help of the Russian Air Force, were able to liberate cities and villages, including Palmyra and the huge parts of Syria, from terrorists after the Russian comes. The question is, why does the United States refuse to cooperate with Russia in fighting terrorism in Syria? If the United States really means to fight terrorism in Syria, why doesn't, co and Russia certainly is fighting terrorism in Syria with the Syrian Arab army, why doesn't the United States accept to join hands with the Russian Federation and fight terrorism in Syria and undermine ISIL and undermine al-Nusra, which is what you call al-Qaeda in Syria. The fact that the President uh, Putin and the Foreign Secretary Lavrov call all the time upon the United States to join hands with them in fighting terrorism, but as you heard, the spokesperson of the Pentagon flatly refused this offer by the Russians. So, uh, on the contrary, the United States brought in 500 soldiers into the northeastern parts of Syria and uh, is cooperating with what it calls the Kurdish Democratic Forces in order to liberate areas from ISIL, but only in order to put the flag of the Kurdish party in these areas, which means in an effort to partition Syria. We had been living in this country for tens of thousands of years. Sunni, Shia, the Christian, Kurds, Armenian, Caucasian, we never talk about these issues in Syria. And that's why this should not be allowed to happen and will not be allowed to happen in, the Syrian, in, in Syria. Unfortunately, what we hear from the United States is confused statements. There, were, uh, there was an agreement on two points between the Russians and the Americans in Geneva. The one point is to separate what they call moderate opposition from al-Nusra so that the U.S. and Russia can target them. And the second point is to close the Turkish border. The United States refused to cooperate on any of these points. And I can give you my analysis because there's no such thing as moderate opposition. There in the field, Al-Nusra, ISIS, 
Ahrar Sham, Rish Islam, they are all killing people, they are all destroying our industry, they are all destroying our cities and villages. And therefore it's very difficult for the United States to do so because it is not a realistic objective. The realistic objective is to target all those terrorists who are, who are exercising terrorism and perpetrating acts of terrorism all over. So who is a moderate and who is not a moderate is an issue that, is, that I think exists in the media and exists in the minds of the, some people in the United States, although there are, as you know, reports also that the United States is supporting and financing and giving Tau missile and other missile to some groups, armed groups in Syria. In his last statements in the Security Council on the 27th of May, Stephen de Mistura spoke about two points, humanitarian assistance and cessation of hostilities or implementing the truce in Syria. As I said at the beginning, the implementation of 2253 is a prerequisite for the implementation of 2254. It is a logical prerequisite for the implementation of 2254 because without fighting this terrorism, without undermining terrorism in Syria, how can you bring peace about and how can you restore Syria to be a peaceful and good country? I would like to tell you, respectable audience, that the Syrian people are not very happy with the humanitarian assistance. They have never been used to eat tinned food and macaroni brought from somewhere. Syrian people are used to eat fruits and fresh vegetables and fresh crops that they themselves grow in Syria. Since the 1970s, the Syrian people raised the motto, we eat from what we grow and we wear from what we manufacture. Syria produces the most delicious fruits, vegetables, the best wheat. It has the best type of sheep all over the world, the best meat. So the Syrian people are able not only to feed themselves, but to feed millions of people with them. Only they need peace and security. And when Syrian people and the Syrian Arab army are fighting terrorism in Syria, believe me, they are fighting a cancer that will spread to the region and the world if we do not initiate that international alliance against terrorism, against ISIS, and against Nusra. It's from this perspective I would like to go back and thank GAFTA again for this commendable effort in order to create or at least raise the awareness for the necessity of a global alliance against ISIS and against al-Nusra. We have a great experience now after six years of horrid war on our people and our army to join hands with whoever would like truly to fight terrorism and not contain ISIS and al-Nusra but undermine and get rid of ISIS and Nusra. Because between you and me, what the United States is doing is trying to contain ISIS in Syria and in Iraq. And by the way, the suffering of the Syrian people and the Iraqi people is the same, because our enemy is the same. Terrorism is, our, is the enemy to all of us. We would love to join hands with the international community, with Western people, in order to get rid of this horrid 21st century disease. One thing is needed, and we will definitely prevail, is to be honest in wanting to fight terrorism, not to take it as a cover for geopolitical purposes and for achieving geopolitical interest for some countries. I thank you again for inviting me and hope to see you in person in Syria after it is peaceful and secure and free of all terrorism. Thank you. Okay, uh, please, I would like just to let everybody, we're gonna have a session for Q&A, question and answer, okay? So in this session, I will take your, okay, your question number one. Okay, but please control 
everything until you're emotional. I would like to get, you know, a fruit from this meeting. Okay, it's an opportunity to talk with her live via Skype to ask any question. So you ask the question and you're going to have the answer. Okay, until they set up the Skype, okay, I would like to see if anybody has any question to our guests. Okay, go ahead, bro. Alfredo Miranda with his fan TV. Wait for the mic, <clears throat> Thank you. Alfredo Miranda with his fan TV. Um, you all three has made a call to not call Islamic terrorism, but you're still using ISIS, unlike in uh, Middle East, they use the term Daesh, which I haven't heard from you guys. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, to whom you like to send a question? Anybody? Any Anyone? Okay. Uh, Stand up on the next time. Well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, the, the no, it's okay. This is good. That's, can you see me? We don't call them that. You guys do. I'm sick and tired. You always call them Islamic, Islamic individual. These are not Islamic. These are. Hardcore cult, terrorism, vicious individuals killing uh, humanity. You know, we don't call them Islamic. We don't believe they are Muslim to begin with. You know that. You know, they've been called Islam in the media, left and right. You know, and we need, we need changes. That's why it's gaffed us today to make this a new concept, a new, uh, a new, a new, a new phenomena. Saying, well, these, these people are uh, not Muslim to begin with. They do not represent Islam. Imam made it very clear. Uh, the media call them Islamic State, uh, Al Jazeera call them Islamic State, uh, you know, they've been coming from uh, all over the country, from Europe, from the state, you know, they've been attacking and killing our people in Iraq and Syria and everywhere else, you know, and, and our backyard right here, you know, so we do not call them Islamic, they do not rep represent Islam whatsoever. The name got to change, we better call them just terrorists, period. Thank you. Yes, do you want me to liberate a little bit, maybe a few no, seconds no, no, about the same question? Yeah, just a few seconds. Uh, Islam means in Arabic uh, uh, peace, coming from Salam, peace. So a cult who destroy children, women, men, they don't care about faith, they don't care, care about sex, they don't care about uh, uh, age, they cannot be called Islam. And let me challenge ISIS. If they are really true Muslims, clear your face and let's see you. Because our beloved Prophet Muhammad and his family and his followers, they have a clear, shiny face. Show us our ugly face if you are really a Muslim. Thank you. Uh, we have right now Dr. Shaban on the line with us live. And uh, thank you for giving us the time to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I'm going to give you the opportunity, you, Dr. Shaban. We have a lot of questions to you, a lot. And everybody is so excited just to have the opportunity to talk with you directly. Thank you so much. So I'll give the first a question uh, to Go ahead. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Shaban. It's a pleasure to speak to you. I'm, my name is Ruth Sherlock. I'm from the Daily Telegraph. Um, I wanted to know whether the Syrian government is going to give uh, the UN permission to carry out aid drops uh, to besieged areas in Syria, given that the uh, Syrian government has apparently failed uh, to allow access to these areas. Uh, and separately, I wanted to know, uh, there's a man called Amir al-Absi. And in 2011, he was released from Sednaya prison. Uh, and he then went on to become a senior member of ISIS. How does releasing people from Sednaya prison uh, who have then gone on to join ISIS, how does that fit in with a government strategy to defeat ISIS? Thank you. Thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Shaban. Uh, sorry, the voice is. Uh, sorry, we have technical problem. We have technical problem. Who is in charge of the. <laughs> no, so, sorry. Uh, we, we have a problem. Uh -huh. So, okay, until we get uh, fix the problem with the Skype, okay, any question to my, uh, but she got your question, she's answering. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Yes. Hello. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, 
Um, there was an investigative piece by ABC uh, today, released today, that said that the uh, popular mobiliz mobilization uh, forces have committed acro atrocities in Fallujah, and that there is a big fear by so many humanitarian organizations, American organizations, that there will be more atrocities committed in, uh, in Fallujah by the uh, um, uh, forces, these forces. So how do you respond? to this uh, investigative What piece. type of atrocity? Beheadings, torture, okay. and other by things. The by the PMUs? Yes, okay. All on right. ABC. We made very, uh, we, I made myself very clear about these beheaded. They started this. We did no, not. No, you, you fix it? Okay, Videos by who? By who? By ABC, ABC. And, and with the help of um, uh, humanitarian One. organizations, American organizations, yeah. that these were committed by um, the, the forces, yeah, the, these uh, I, yeah, I, I'll be honest, mobilization forces. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, Hollywood here no made a movie about some bad apples called Three Kings back in 1998 about the uh, liberation of uh, Kuwait when Saddam Hussein occupied uh, Kuwait. You know, I happened to play with it, yeah, <laughs> made some money, you know. Well, I mean, uh, there's always going to be some bad apples, honestly. I mean, uh, look at the American soldier, what they did in... Uh, in, in, in Iraq, you know, you remember the Haditha case, remember the Mahmoudiyah case, remember the Abu Ghraib prison? They were always going to have some few bad apples here and there. Okay, I'm not saying these are perfect individuals, uh, these people left, uh, lost their life, but I guarantee you I, I, I was in charge of about 20 cases myself. About some cases, there were actually uh, human rights, uh, you know, violation uh, activities done by the PMUs. And I looked in each and every one cases. Honestly, we never had any enough evidence uh, sometimes, honestly, sometimes, you know, we don't have enough evidence, period. You know, it, a lot of media established by, uh, by, uh, uh, by ISIS, it goes in the Internet saying that, you know, the PMUs did those things, you know. And it turned out it's what they are creating these images on, 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 on Facebook and social media. I mean, we don't have a clear case, but uh, I'll be happy to look into this. And honestly, it's going to happen. It's going to happen here and there. There will be some human rights violation here and there. This is not, a, this is not an easy war. This is a, uh, a battlefield between a very vicious, uh, you know, uh, criminal ISIS. You know, we, we, can't, we can't be perfect. Uh, uh, no, we just, we just can't get an alternative response. Okay. I'd like just to be sure uh, the Skype is uh, running good, because we have a problem with the sounds. Okay, uh, the can you hear me? Yes, right now, yes, we could hear you. Yes, yes, uh, we can. I think l let us, let us uh, do it with the audio if we can't do it video. Yes. I uh, would uh, you know, like to participate with you in this panel, even uh, if it is without the uh, picture. No, Dr. Shaban, we could see your picture. Uh, right now, we fix the sounds. I think we're okay. Okay, we could hear your voice. Okay, keep going. Okay. Uh, you could okay. answer the first question. Yeah. For, for yes. the lady uh, who, from the Daily Telegraph who asked yes. me about the Syrian government not allowing airdrops, I would like to tell her that, the, that uh, these are our people in Syria and we are trying our best with the UN representative here to try and find the best ways to uh, make all medicine, all food, everything reach every single citizen in Syria. By the way, the UN uh, envoy here is the one who was discussing with uh, our official that it is impossible to drop, for example, children vaccine or um, other important medicines from the air, and it is a very costly uh, endeavor, and it is very dangerous, and it is not secure. And there's no need for that uh, so long as we, all of us, try uh, to reach um, every single Syrian citizen. I, ho I hope you will put aside uh, a lot of what is circulated in the media because uh, it's all targeting the Syrian government and whatever it does and, and the Syrian people. As for what you asked me about the Sidnaya prison, I have no knowledge of this case, but I can tell you that since the beginning of this war, uh, there, are, um, many, uh, th there were many decrees issued in order to uh, allow uh, other people to get out of prison or to reach uh, a reconciliation uh, with, the, with, with the Syrian people and with the Syrian government. And uh, if someone of those turned out to uh, go and be a terrorist or join ISIS, somebody from Norway the other day was joining ISIS and killing people in Tartus and Jebel. Do we say that Norway is responsible for this uh, terrorist? 
who joined ISIS? I mean, this is only a logical question to ask. There's no doubt, there should be no doubt in your mind that the Syrian government is the one, the Syrian Arab army, the Syrian people are the ones who are the fighting ISIS, fighting terrorism, because this terrorism has knocked Syria a hundred years back. It destroyed our schools, it destroyed our hospitals, it destroyed our factories, it destroyed our land. So it's only uh, sensible that we are desperately and very strongly against this terrorism that is hitting Syria. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Shaban. Thank you. We have thank another you. question. We have, you're going to have a lot of questions today, in the, and we have one I'm, hour yeah. for questions. We're, we're going to get to everybody. Okay, so I'm, please, one by one. Yes. I'm ready. Thank um, you. Thanks so much. Dr. Shaban, my name is Ruan Rajule. I'm a Syrian citizen and I'm an analyst in the Center of Religion and Geopolitics, Tony Blair Faith Foundation. My question to you is, as a Syrian, what are the concessions that the government, Syrian government, is willing to do in Geneva in order to overcome, yes, the, the turmoil that Syrians are feeling, but what is the political solution? When you talked about political solutions, well, there are concessions. Look at Tunisia. There was... Um, concessions, tanazulat, from both sides to come into um, a solution. So, please... Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. You. Okay. Dr. Uh, I, I assume that you follow up news as you are a journalist and Tony Blair Foundation, and I think you should have known that in the last uh, meeting in Geneva, it was the Riyadh delegation that withdrew from the negotiation and who refused to uh, uh, meet with the uh, Syrian delegation. And they left Geneva while our delegation, the Syrian government delegation, the country's delegation stayed in Geneva and talked with the Mistura till the very end. And we are very constructive, we are very positive, Saying concessions is, is, a, is a wrong word because uh, there, there are no concessions that are being asked to make. What we want is to, all of us to make our country a better place for all the Syrian people. But when you have an opposition that is ordered by Turkey to leave Geneva, and they leave Geneva and, they, and, and to be ordered by Saudi Arabia, those I, I don't think Syria is their first priority. I think you should ask these people how can they get rid of uh, the, the orders that are given to them from outside and how can they put Syria first in order to bring peace into Syria. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shaman. Next question. Please uh, uh, introduce yourself every time. Hi, my name is Elian Al Khamisi. I'm from Press TV. Uh, my question is, is there a complete plan by the resistance front to combat terrorism or are we, are, is the resistance front still on the defense? Is, um, is, is there, sorry, is there a, a willingness on the resistance camp to uproot terrorism? Is there a resistance plan? Is there a, yeah. a, a complete what? plan to combat terrorism? Or is the resistance on the defense still? No, the resistance camp, if you mean by uh, Syria, uh, Hezbollah, and Iran, and uh, uh, Iraq also, this is all what they are doing. All what they are doing is that they are combating terrorism, but as you can see, there are so many complicated issues in the region, and with regional uh, powers financing, arming, as I said in my speech, and facilitating terrorism, uh, we have a big problem. Otherwise, you know, if we close, if the international community were able to close the Syrian-Turkish border today, half of terrorists will, will be undermined immediately in no time. So it, it needs the will of regional and international power to have a one uh, alliance, real alliance, as GAFTA is saying, global alliance against terrorism. It's very difficult for the resistance camp to approve terrorism while others are feeding into this terrorism all the time. Thank you. Thank you. And next one, on the, on the sequence will go. Okay, we'll go this one, and after I come to them, and after I come to you. Uh, Mohammed Kinasari yeah. from Turkey's Anadolu Agency. Uh, there are tons of reports suggesting that uh, the ISIS oil and uh, natural gas used by the regime in exchange of electricity and other utilities uh, returned to ISIS. I was wondering what is your position on that, and if not, uh, if you disagree with that, uh, how the ISIS gets the electricity and other facilities? Thank you. I think I think the best uh, person to direct this question to is the Turkish government, because it has been proven beyond any, any doubt okay, that it is the Turkish government who is, me, who is buying oil from from the terrorists in Syria. It is the Turkish government who is making excuse billions me. of dollars out of this. 
and also making billions of dollars out of uh, blackmailing Europe about refugees while it was Turkey who started the whole Syrian problem about refugees. I stop at that. Thank you. Okay, because we have too many questions, please just listen after. Go next one after. Well, maybe we will take to you again. I need this area. Yeah, no, no. Okay. Let's start with this. I'll come to you after. I will get it. I will come. Go ahead. Go ahead. Next. Um, I'm from the tower. Um, from where, please? The, the tower. The tower. The tower, yeah. From? Yeah. The tower. I put the microphone close to your mouth, please. Is this better? Yes, okay. okay. Um, this, this would be a follow-up question in a sense. Yeah, put it very um, close to your mouth to hear better, yeah. The U.S. Treasury Department said in December that ISIS is selling a great deal of oil to the Assad regime. Um, and Secretary of State John Kerry said in November that Assad has cut his own deal with ISIS. They sell oil, he buys oil. They're symbiotic, not real enemies in this. Um, how then can Assad be part of a coalition to defeat ISIS when his government seems to be assisting the group? Okay. And Dr. Shaban, that's the question. I really didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. Repeat it again. No, repeat it again, please. No, if, no, you, no. if you can okay. repeat it, please. The, the question no, no. is... Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Excuse me. Thank you. Very close and, and uh, say it loud, yeah. The U.S. Treasury Department said in December that ISIS is selling a great deal of oil to the Assad regime. Secretary of State John Kerry said in November that Assad has cut his own deal with ISIS. They sell oil, he buys oil. They are symbiotic, not real enemies in this. How then can Assad be a part of a coalition to defeat ISIS when his government seems to be assisting the group? Thank you. Well, the answer is a new question. There is no question that the Syrian government never buys oil or sells oil to, to the terrorists. The, the Syrian government, the Syrian Arab army, the Syrian people are engaged in full battle and we have paid with hundreds of thousands of martyrs against terrorism. There are so many unfounded views that are expressed in the media. I don't think you have to believe all of them. Thank you. Okay. Right now to the next... Uh, okay. Sound my no, no, she, she never asked. This is the first time she asked. Dr. Buthayna Shaban was Waqfi from Al Jazeera, and we're here. We're listening to you to broadcast your views. So it's, we, uh, we did not boycott the Syrian government. My question is, uh, you just said that all, uh, all um, terrorists, and I'm quoting you, all terrorists, all terrorists came from the Turkish borders, all the terrorists inside Syria, um, end of quote. Um, but Zahran Alush and the other example that we've just heard, Zahran Alush, who was um, killed inside Syria, uh, covered uh, extensively by um, government seat owned uh, uh, media. Um, uh, he was described as a big terrorist leader by uh, your own media. He was inside a Syrian prison and he was let go in 2011 by the Syrian government. Uh, did you not know about his past? And why was he in prison then released based on that? And Thank of course, you. Uh, Turkey, th that okay. means they did not all come through the Turkish. Uh, Thank you so much. Here. Thank you. You know, try to make the question also like, short to give more opportunity to everybody to answer. Dr. Shaban, I, uh, please. Uh, you have, I really uh, don't know, you know, if you are insinuating that we could possibly know that somebody is going to turn uh, such a terrorist and we let him out of prison. He was, uh, uh, he was uh, taken to court and then he was uh, released just as any prisoner would be released uh, after uh, he spends uh, the time that he had to spend in prison. But I meant all the terrorists who came from out Syria. I, I actually, I should have said most of them, because some of them came uh, through the, the Jordanian borders. And uh, the fact that uh, McVeigh made the uh, you know, explosion in Oklahoma and killed, and killed 70 children doesn't mean that McVeigh was uh, uh, a friend of the American government to go and kill uh, children in Oklahoma. The same applies to Zahran Alush. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and, and next, and after I come to you, and and after, uh, actually, they're on the line. Let's go them, and after I come to you, okay? Just, I, I, I spot you, okay? That's it. And My name is Kinda Qanbar, Al Arab newspaper, Al Arab Londoni. I have a question here to clarify because I'm really confused. Mr. Kibbe, you were talking about Iraq and you were saying that oh, most of the terrorists came from Syria. And now Dr. Buthana, she's saying like all of them are coming from outside Syria. So where are we standing from no, now? No, I clear my position. Let, let, okay. me, let, yeah, me, yeah, let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. That's my first question. We need to know exactly where we're standing from here. Are they coming from the Syria or are they coming from out Syria or both? Elaborate. Thank you. Second okay. question. The, Dr. Shaban, you're saying that, you know, you know, the Syrian people who are like, you know, they're not receiving human aids are Syrian. 
and still Daraya is under a siege and not receiving food. What they received only, like, you know, birth control pills and like, you know, some namusiyat, like to, some, you know, covers from mosquito. What about like, you know, the food? We need to okay. clarify that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Dr. Shaban first, I need to defend myself as a gafter to clear it, okay? When yeah. I said, yes, ISIS came from Syria, but before, it, it, they came from Turkey. They converted to Syria, it's very clear, and from Syria they came to Iraq. It is very well known when they invaded Mosul, ISIS came from Syria. It's a fact. It's a fact. And ISIS was exist. Yeah. So when I'm saying all the terrorists coming from Turkey to Syria, to Iraq, it's fact. And I let Dr. Shaban. Uh, uh. I would like to tell um, uh, Mr. Kanbar that the two Americans who were killed in Syria, their passports were stamped in Turkey, and that was it. There was no other stamp on the, on their uh, uh, on their passport. Uh, so uh, it is a fact, uh, uh, Russian satellites and even American satellites uh, in the last one month saw over 8,000 terrorists coming from Turkey. There is, you know, the proof for that would be if the international community were able to close the, board, the Turkish border tomorrow, you would see what happens to the uh, war in Syria, you know. Um, so, but the issue is not where they came from, the issue is how to fight them, the issue is how to undermine terrorism. The issue is how to, to, to end terrorism. And if you are talking about Daraya, Ms. Kanbar, I think I am the one who is living here. I can tell you that uh, Daraya is producing uh, uh, peas and beans and food and, uh, and wild berries. Uh, that is enough for the entire Syria. It is a very fertile land and nobody is starving in Daraya. But what we were trying to take into Daraya is the school curricula, the children vaccination uh, and uh, whatever uh, the, the, the few citizens who are left in the area are asking for. I wish that you would be a little bit uh, more humble because you don't live in Syria and we are the ones who live in Syria. Those are our people. It's our country that is being hit, okay. not yours. Okay. Uh, uh, Thank you. Okay, after that. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Kimberly Helkett from Al Jazeera. Uh, Ms. Shaban, I want to ask you, yesterday the State Department spokesman John Kirby called you a propaganda mouthpiece. You have appeared now via Skype in violation of the U.S.'s sanctions by the U.S. Treasury Department. How can your appearance today be viewed as anything other than a Syrian push for legitimacy? Thank you. Um, have I violated the American law by appearing here on satellite? I mean, uh, repeat the question. Uh, please. I guess that would be for the Treasury Department to determine. So, so let me rephrase the question then. There is, of course, as you are aware, sanctions against you, s preventing you from traveling to the United States. Still, No, no, there isn't. Excuse me, let me correct you. When the decision was made against me, it was made freezing assets. That's all. Uh, my, my colleague, Mr. Walid al his name is with me, and he traveled to the United States many times after that. So I don't have any uh, legal decision to prevent me from traveling to the United States. Why are the, you not uh, here then today? The decision is freezing assets, and as I have no assets in the United States, so they can freeze any assets they want. Okay, so just to, to very quickly follow up, is this a push for legitimacy? Is, is this an opportune time? Well, I received an invitation, and I was glad to receive it, and I'm happy to participate in order to give an insight into what is truly happening in Syria in an effort to combat terrorism, because all of us will be victims of terrorism if, the, if we want to fight terrorism united. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Suzanne Merritt, and I'm with the Syrian American Council. Great questions by the media today, actually. Uh, the question is to GAFTA. Want to know how you can hold a forum calling for a plan to get rid of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and yet you're providing a platform to a foremost enabler of ISIS and Al-Qaeda. A lot of the questions today stated uh, shared that with you. Also, it is openly stated by the Assad regime by your organization that you support Hezbollah openly when Hezbollah is actually on the U.S. terrorist list? No. Okay. Um, a, lot of what, a lot of what Hussein Shaban said today was absolute BS, which happened to be her initials as well, but wanted to mention that she talked about how can you have an armed opposition? We only talk about political oppositions. You will have an armed opposition, Hussein, when people go out into the streets, 
peacefully and protest, asking for democracy and freedom, when at the same time the Assad regime lets go of extremists in prisons to go to Iraq, kill American soldiers, while on the streets of Syria, the Assad regime rounds up these peaceful protesters, throws them in prison, rapes their wives and rapes their daughters, kills them, okay. provides we'll chemicals to kill them, okay. slashes their throats with knives, okay. and yet you okay. want them to stand and not be in armed opposition? The moderate opposition exists okay. and is still standing after five years. Okay. Do, you, okay. do you, excuse me, do you accept an armed opposition that destroys your factories and the schools and the hospitals in the United States under the name that it wants to change the government? Do you accept that? Does, does any country in the world accept that? Is Iraq better now after the American occupation of Iraq than it has been before? Did you establish a democracy and the human rights in Iraq? Are the Iraqi people living in heaven after the American occupation of Iraq? I think it's about time, please, that Western audiences be real and look at our countries and see what we are suffering from. We are rooted in this land. We are not going to go anywhere. We want to make our countries better. But with every American intervention, with every Western intervention, with every terrorist intervention, our countries are knocked a hundred years back. You are not here to see what's happening to Syrian women, to Syrian children. You didn't see the man who killed no, his mother, me. you know, because he is a terrorist. You, you don't see that. So please, you know, take what you read with a great pinch of salt. Thank you so much. Uh, number one, Oxy, uh, Haida, hold us again. Haida, stop. Okay. Haida, okay. Haida, okay. stop. Oh, just a minute. Moment. Okay, what I'm saying, first of all, as GAFTA, I want to answer you, okay? We in GAFTA, we look as independent organization, look to the geopolitics. I'm an engineer. We calculate forces. People like you, okay, people like you, hold a second, uh, respect the rules of the, when I talk, no interruption. Okay, when, when we, okay, when we look to the geopolitics of the region, I'm a realist, I'm an engineer, I calculate forces. People like you, by promoting that way, more suffering to the Syrian people. I want to tell you something. The war became a proxy war. Russia and Iran anchored Bashar al-Assad. It's fact. You agree with me. I don't think you don't disagree with me. You agree with me. Based on that fact, this, the status quo is going to stay for another 10 years. And who is suffering? The Syrian people and the Iraqi people. Suffering people like you. People like you. You promote just to keep the status quo without giving an alternative and solution. I am here not to support or endorse any regime, not to advise, but to open Gafta like a lake and all the rivers around the global come to this lake to open channels in the civilized way. In the civil wars, I gave you an opportunity to you to give a question to Dr. Boutel Shaban. You will never dream about it. I made it for you. Okay? So, Gafta, we'd like to hear voices. That's the idea. We give we, as an opportunity to everybody to ask any question you like. That's the idea of Gafta. So, Mr. No, no, Kubba, no, no. right would you allow me to yes, ask? Right now, Dr. Shaban, isn't there a freedom of the press in the United States? What is the problem if you hear a voice from the Syrian government as you have been he hearing thousands of voices of agents who sold their countries and who are only interested in pleasing their masters? What is the problem? I am a peaceful person. I'm talking to you through satellite. I love my country. I taught in the United States for two years. I had three books published in the United States, read by American people. I'm a beneficiary of American educational system. I did my PhD in England. I'm not against the West. I'm Western-oriented, but I am a Syrian, deeply rooted Syrian. And I know that this war is very destructive on my country. And I know that the Western people should learn that they cannot go on in this way, destroying our countries and destroying our people because they are misled or because they, are, they have illusions about what's happening in, in, in Syria. I think that even the American government acknowledged that it should not have withdrew its ambassadors. All European countries acknowledge that they should not have withdrew their ambassadors from Syria. At least they should have left an ambassador to know what is it truly happening in Syria. Thank you, Dr. Chan. Okay, Thank you. Uh, we have, uh, okay, uh, 
Had, uh, we have one and after you, okay? After you, we'll finish after you. And after we come to you, and after we come back. Um, Shala Sadigi from Voice of America, Persian News Network. Uh, my first question is Dr. Uh, Shabon. Um, you mentioned that uh, it's dangerous to, to let the food aid to drop uh, in the area which people are starving. I mean, are you afraid that the boxes might kill uh, starving people? And uh, why is the government avoiding uh, letting the UN convoy and the food aid to get to the people, civilian people? And my second question is to uh, Mr. Bassam al Husseini. You mentioned that uh, Ayatollah Sistani in 2014 uh, issued a fatwa for the people to uh, raise against ISIS. Um, but 2014. Yes. But now, uh, last week, Ayatollah Sistani again issued another fatwa for the people who are going to uh, uh, free Fallujah to uh, save the people and not to um, uh, admit Terrorize. atrocities. Right. So if there is such a concern with the leadership of the uh, Shia leadership, how can, even if uh, uh, Fallujah is uh, freed, how can uh, Sunnis and Shia can live together in peace? Uh, what are the Shia religion leaders, uh, the other leaders are going to do about after Okay. You know, if such a we got the message. I think the time is limited. Uh, Madam, so first... I did not say it is dangerous to drop food. Uh, I said it's dangerous to drop the children's vaccine and medicine. And this is not what I said. This is what the representative of uh, Demastura is, is talking to Syrian government about. Daraya is the food basket of Damascus. There's nobody starving in Daraya. We all uh, take our food from Daraya. I don't think you should, you know, take things at such face value, you know, and you should always be accusatory in your questions. And even you are now accusatory in hearing me. You know, I didn't say food. I said medicine and vac vaccine. And I'm only repeating what the UN is deciding, you know. Yeah. And, and I, although I know your second question is not directed to me, but I can tell you that Sunni and Shia were not only living in Fallujah and Iraq and in Syria. There are intermarriages among them. They would never, anybody would ask, who is a Sunni and who is a Shia? And, and by the way, my husband is from an Iraqi origin. I know Iraq as I know Syria. We are all Arabs. We speak the same language. We have the same problem. We have lived here for tens of thousands of years without any ethnic or sectarian problem. It's only Western agenda that is creating these problems among our people. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks. Uh, yeah, well, let me, let me address, uh, address yeah, just, the second uh, part of the question. Uh, Actually, just because a lot of these reports that uh, some of you asked me earlier about these uh, human rights violation about done by the uh, PMUs and uh, you know, or, or even the army itself, you know, uh, Sistani a couple of days ago issued that fatwa. So, well, make sure we take care of the people of Fallujah. Do not kill them. Do not uh, hurt them. And I, I want to make uh, some kind of kind of funny. Just I read it uh, the other day about uh, that. Uh, you know, like they accuse the PMUs that hurt or abuse the women. You know, guess what? When when we got hold of these women, they were actually uh, you know ISIS dressed like a woman. And so I concur. We did abuse those type of women only. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I hide that one behind you. Does he ask me? Uh, yes. Hello. My name is Paul Shinkman. I'm with U.S. News and World Report. Um, Dr. Uh, Shaban, I've got uh, three straightforward questions for you. One is it's a follow-up. Can you say yes or no whether the Syrian government will allow UN aid drops? And if not, why not? Um, secondly, while we've been speaking, there have been some reports about an explosion in uh, Latakia. Do you have any details on that? And then lastly, uh, uh, the journalist Austin Tice remains missing. I wonder if you have any information on that, and can you say declaratively? that he is not in the uh, Syrian government uh, authority captivity. Sorry, only, only your last question. I got the first two, but what's the last one? Austin Tice, the journalist who went missing Austin in Tice. 2012. Can you say that he's not uh, in, um, under uh, Syrian government authority? Thank you. I don't know why you, uh, you know, you are so interested in aerodrops and you are not interested in at, at least mentioning what the terrorists did in uh, Jebele and Tartus a few days ago, killing 200 uh, civilians. 
um, airdrops or no airdrops or uh, uh, trucks on the road. This is something that is being discussed between the UN and the Syrian government. And this is um, not very important to us. The most important thing to us is to uproot terrorism. Because as I told you in my speech, the Syrian people are able to feed themselves. And by the way, when the first baskets, food baskets, used to arrive from the UN, the Syrian people would cry and would never accept to take any food basket because they have never accepted aid from anybody. Syria has never taken aid. It has never taken a loan from any other country. Syrian people are very proud. This doesn't mean that we are not trying our very best to make everything arrive to our citizens. But as Western, I would love you to be more interested in, f in fighting terrorism, in uprooting terrorism, in encouraging your government to take the right stand against terrorism, because this is what will bring a lasting peace, not only to Syria, but, the, but, but to the entire region. I did not hear of any explosion today, today in Latakia, and I think Aston Said came uh, to the terrorist area, and the Syrian government knows nothing about him. We had been contacted, and if we knew anything about him, we would tell, because we already uh, made others who Americans who were here returned to the United States to their family, although they were fighting with the terrorists. This is how forgiving we are. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next, now uh, Hi, my name is Havi Buzo. I'm uh, the bureau chief of Orient TV in Washington. Uh, I'm a Syrian American who actually had to flee. You know, I had to flee for my life from Syria in late 2011 because not because I'm ISIS, not because you know I'm uh, endangering anybody in any way, but just because I'm from an opposition family who I you know joined the revolution in the beginning as just a Syrian youth, and um, I just wanted to ask uh, Buthaina Shaban about Mr. Michel Smaha. When you say that you know have nothing, no no legal implications against you here. Mr. Michel Smaha was always in your office in the presidential palace uh, who later on Michel Smaha is a Lebanese parliament member who was uh, taped while he was taking bombs to bomb Christian areas in Lebanon. He is an advisor to you and to uh, Bashar al-Assad and he was at your office all the time. Can you please verify your relationship with this guy who's Thank you. actually been imprisoned? Thank you. Um, you know, honestly, and I want to talk... What do, yes. No, what because do question by question. Al Jazeera the are interested is about Iraq. is yeah, only to uh, circulate uh, uh, rumors that serve your purposes. And I already said at the beginning of my speech that Al Jazeera was absolutely a major uh, tool in initiating this war against Syria. Uh, and therefore, I do not expect uh, anything, any contribution better than this from okay. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please, uh, I need everybody to ask only one question, because we have too many people they want to ask to cover everything, and we have only half an hour left. So please, one question, and briefly, and uh, that will give everybody the chance, the opportunity to ask. Please, go ahead next and introduce yourself, and you know. Leander Bernstein, I'm with Sputnik International News, and I have a question about the, the peace process and under UN Security Council Resolution, uh, oh, I just forgot the number, uh, the roadmap, the timeline set August as a, as a date, a deadline for, uh, for a new constitution, transitional government bodies to be formed. First, do you think you can meet that deadline? And given the number of players in the country, uh, is a, a, un, a, a unified Syria a foregone conclusion at this time? Thank you. Uh, uh, I think this question should be addressed to de Mistura, whether he can, uh, whether there is any deadline uh, as a start and whether he can face deadline because as I said, the Syrian government delegation is, has been absolutely cooperative on every uh, step. Uh, so uh, whether uh, she's saying with so many players in Syria, I think with so many players in the region and in the world, but Syria, uh, you know, this city from which I'm talking is 10,000 years old. It is the eldest continuously inhabited city in the world because the Syrian people are very resilient and they are going to keep Syria together and they're going to restore peace and security and Syria will be again a pride of the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Introduce yourself, please. Yusuf Najjar, born and raised in Lebanon. We had a lot 
during the years suffering from the Syrian regime in Lebanon, civil war, sectarian war. I, I can tell that you are smiling now, you know what I'm talking about. So, that's been said. Back to Mr. Michel Smeha, the Lebanese government found him guilty and charged him with four years in prison just for transporting these explosives from your place to Lebanon to kill innocent people, Muslims and Christians at the same time. We heard the phone calls. There was no Al Jazeera, no Qatar, no Saudis. So back, the Lebanese government, who's backed up by the Syrian regime, charged him with four years. What to say about that? You, you know, you know. I wish you could be constructive. We are here with GAFTA to talk about the global alliance against ISIS and Al Qaeda and Al Nusra. And all what you are bringing is something that you think it's embarrassing to me. But nothing is embarrassing to me. But it's something irrelevant to me. Thank you. No, excuse me. To control uh, security, security. No, no. You cannot interrupt. Hold a second. You, uh, yeah, she's, no, no, no. You cannot interrupt. You have to respect. Okay. You have to respect. Please stop. Please stop. No, please stop. Okay, because you have to respect the speaker. Okay. okay. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, right. No, no, no. You ask me the question. Can I say something, please? No, no. Please. After. Good morning, Dr. Shaban. Um, you said that. The Introduce yourself, please. I'm sorry, Paul Wood. I covered Syria for a number of years for the BBC. Uh, you said that the Syrian people don't want the international community's macaroni and tin fruits. Do you accept Syrian people don't want, sorry? Uh, the international community's macaroni and tinned fruits. Uh, do you accept, one, that there are people dying of hunger in opposition areas? And do you accept, two, this is because of the regime's policy of surrender or starve? Can I, can I correct you, please? I said Syrian people always lived on fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. And the best thing you can do is to help us defeat terrorism so that we can go back to grow our products and eat from our products. It doesn't mean that uh, we are ungrateful to what the UN is giving our people now who are in need, not only in terrorist areas, but in also other areas. There is a lot of poverty after five years of war. But I think you have to take the point as I meant it and as I said it and as we want it. We want peace and security to come back to Syria so that we don't have to talk about any humanitarian assistance. And this humanitarian assistance could go to people who need that more than the Syrian people. So please, you know, try to be positive in understanding what I'm saying, because I'm saying it with a very positive attitude. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please introduce yourself. You represent who? Again, my name is Alfredo Miranda. I'm with Hispan TV, with his Hispanic media. Um, briefly, this meeting, and as you stated, it's to try to unify uh, forces against the terrorism, the, which involves civilian and government. Uh, how optimistic you are to have the United States government involved in this task when the ultimate goal of the United, United States goal is to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. Uh, is to me the question, to Gafta? No, no, to uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Shabat. Dr. Okay, I see. Uh, Dr. Uh, I don't think the, uh, now, you know, the, the, the process has developed during the crisis, and I don't think now that the announced aim of the United States is to overthrow uh, Bashar al-Assad. I think the problem now is the danger uh, that is the befalling Syria and Iraq and the region. And I think the attitude of the United States government now has developed a great deal from the attitude at the beginning of the crisis because they can see that what's happening in Syria is very dangerous to the safety and security of Iraq, of the region, and of the world at large. And therefore, we are cooperating with very good intention with our Russian partners, and the Russian partners are cooperating with the United States and talking to the United States, hoping to find uh, a solution uh, to uh, undermine terrorism and to restore peace and security to Syria and Iraq, God willing. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, I have this gentleman. Okay, and after we come to you. Okay. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Luqman Ahmed, uh, BBC, uh, Arabic, Washington, uh, Dr. Buthayna. All this happened in Syria because there are a lot of people went out on the street demanding that uh, regime change. And that led to this situation 
hundreds of thousands of Syrians are now out of the country. Have you ever, as a regime there, regret you being in power that led to this position? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think, you know, the, the diagnosis you gave is the wrong one. Uh, I think if the Syrian people went out to against the, the government, the government could not stay for six years against the will of its people. And I would like only to remind you, Mr. Lokman, that the Turkish government, uh, Erdogan government, put hundreds of tents on the Syrian-Turkish borders weeks before any Syrian refugee crossed the border. So you can't, uh, you know, uh, diagnose something wrong and say, do you regret? I don't for a moment regret being uh, part of the Syrian government because we are standing for our people. We are standing against terrorism. I'm standing for the future of Syria. And may I break a secret that could be very dangerous. I was paid millions of dollars to leave the Syrian government by, by, by countries and parties who claim uh, human rights and, and, and who claim uh, that they want to liberate Syria. We are here because we are honorable people, we call, because we believe in our country, because we hate treason, and because we hate to be satellites to any power in the world. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hi there. Next. Uh... Hello, uh, Karen DeYoung with the Washington Post. There's been a proposal from the opposition for a Ramadan truce starting this weekend. Does the government uh, have any interest in that, or do you see that as a, as a possibility that could stop the fighting at least temporarily? And secondly, uh, certainly from the outside, there have been a lot of accusations against the government for its use of barrel bombs, a uh, particularly indiscriminate weapon that has killed a lot of civilians. Uh, would the government think that in order to stop the death of civilians that it might be a good idea, or does the government have any desire to, to stop the use of that particular weapon? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks much. Thank you. You know, honestly, I, um, I don't want to give up on the idea of a free press, but you are forcing me to do so because I'm amazed at uh, how the questions are coming from completely distorted uh, perspective. The opposition uh, does not want to go uh, to, to negotiate during Ramadan because they are all Islamists. We do not mind serving our country even during Ramadan. The true Islam is the Islam uh, that fights for the people every day, every night, because the lives of people are more important uh, than any, anything else. Uh, the accusation to my government, you did not hear any accusation of uh, uh, all these uh, uh, horrible uh, uh, bottle, gas bottles that are being dropped on the people of Aleppo. You did not hear about uh, the, the horrible explosions in Jabla and Tartus, about uh, the school of uh, uh, Akram al-Makhzumi. It's amazing that you never condemn any terrorist act that, that the terrorists are taking uh, about uh, against our civilian people. I invite all of you respectable people in this room to rethink what you've been questioning, to rethink what you've been thinking, and to try and search for the right information, because we need your voices against terrorism. Terrorism is not a monopoly to Syria and Iraq. If, if God forbid it succeeded here, you find it on your doorsteps. Thank you. I can just follow up. Um, actually, we did write quite a bit about the attacks uh, in, in Latakia, and we have written quite a bit about the use of, of um, uh, what you called gas bottles. But I'm asking yeah. a specific question about the government's action and whether the government uh, believes that there's any advantage in stopping the use of this particular weapon. Thank you. The government believes in stopping all this war in Syria. The government believes that the maximum effort should be made in order to restore peace and security to every corner of Syria, because this is all what we are working for, and this is all what we want, and this is what we live for. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Shaban, I am. My name is Imam Husham al Husseini. I'm the director of Karbala Islamic Center from Dearborn, Michigan. I'm one of the speakers. I'm asking you, please, two quick questions. Uh, there is about 40, 60 countries fighting. They're supposed to fight terrorism in Syria, the coalition. Could they prevent the transferring terrorists from Raqqa to Mosul, 
or they fail? That's one question. And the second, uh, we hear that some of the drop from the coalition went to, uh, went to ISIS, and they claim it was because of the wind or something like that. So can you tell us something about that, please? I, th I don't think the coalition uh, is interested in stopping the terrorists from Raqqa to Al Mosul or from Al Mosul to Al Raqqa. And I, I think it, it is not a rumor, but it is an established fact that um, some of the weapons were dropped uh, to, the, to the terrorists earlier on, um, really, and, and m not only once, uh, more than once. I believe that the, the space for terrorism between Raqqa and Mosul is the same space, and therefore we should fight it together. And that's why I said, I can't see why the Russian Federation and the United States cannot join hands in fighting terrorism, both in Syria and Iraq. This would be the best way if we honestly, if everybody honestly believes in fighting and defeating terrorism. The problem that I face and the problem that we all face, and now it is confirmed to me by the questions of the respectable uh, audience, is that uh, there is no uh, honesty in handling, uh, in, in handling this issue. And there is a lot of rumors that are taken uh, as a fact. Unfortunately, uh, investigative journalism is no longer here. And uh, I can see that rumors are making up the minds of so many of the respectable journalists, which is a shame, which really is costing us blood here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question, please. Uh, introduce yourself. And after I come to you. Dr. Shaban, Jeff Selden from VOA. A couple of questions. First, you mentioned earlier about some of the abilities that the Russians brought to Syria in terms of being able to find the terrorists and strike at them. Given those Russian capabilities that have been brought to bear, how come there have been so many reports and why, and, and, and of, of airstrikes, not just barrel bombs, but others hitting hospitals, hitting schools where innocent people would presumably be? And, and why haven't those Russian capabilities been used to avoid that? And my second question, uh, a number of weeks ago, the Russians pulled out some of their air power from Syria, and there were reports that the reason that they did that was because they were upset and, and not satisfied with some of the words and some of the things that uh, President Assad was saying. What is the relationship between Syria and Russia right now? And what more is Syria asking from Russia to improve the situation? I Thank really, I, I got your first question, but I didn't get your second. Uh, can, I, can I sum up your second, that what Syria is asking Russia to do? Yes, uh, g given that there were reports that Russia was unhappy with some of the statements being made by President Assad. What is the relationship okay. right now, okay. and what more are you okay. asking of Russia? Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, before the Russians came to Syria, the Syrian Arab army and the Syrian planes were trying their best to fight terrorism, but definitely we don't have the Russian Air Force, you know, we are not as equipped we don't have the uh, sophisticated uh, weapons, we don't have the Air Force capability uh, that the Russian Federation has. It doesn't mean that we did, did nothing uh, before the Russians came. We were fighting terrorism for the last five years before the Russians came to help us. But when the Russians came to help us, we were able to liberate. Um, a huge amount of land in Syria and many cities and many villages with the help of the Russian Air Force. As for the reports that the, the Russians are unhappy with uh, some statements of President Assad, you know, we hear that every day. And uh, I think you can, uh, you can judge that uh, those who are not happy with the Russian-Syrian relations are always circulating rumors that Russia is not happy with the Syrian government or Iran is not happy with the uh, cooperation with Russia. I can um, assure you and, uh, that the Russian-Syrian relations are excellent, that the cooperation between us is, fa is fantastic, and with Iran as well, and with Hezbollah. And by the way, the Russian-Syrian uh, relations are historic. Um, we know our Russian friends very well. Uh, our army has always been armed from Russia. Our uh, officers have all studied in Russia. And we know that uh, our Russian friends are people whom we can rely on very well and we can trust completely. Thank it you is so a, 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 a relationship of parity and respect between us. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I don't have this. Go ahead. 
please introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is Yara Bayumi from Reuters. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask you is if you could comment on reports um, that the Syrian army and the Russian Air Force are about to launch um, an operation on Deir ez -Zor, the ISIS-held area of Deir ez -Zor. and also what is your reaction to the recent US-backed operation on Membij? <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a military officer and I have no clue whether they are preparing for an operation or not. Next. Okay, next. Thank you. Hi again, Dr. Shabans, Ruth Sherlock from the... Introduce yourself again. Yeah, Ru Ruth Sherlock from the Daily Telegraph. Um, we don't, absolutely don't want uh, for you to feel that this is, questioning is unfair and we have been doing reporting from both sides, but it's absolutely t sort of... Uh, great to be able to get your responses to some of the questions we've been asking uh, ourselves for a long time. Um, so there's been some um, sort of in-depth studies of bombing patterns by both Syria and the regime, uh, sorry, sorry, Syria uh, and the Syrian regime and its Russian allies. Uh, Could you please say the Syrian government? Because it's a government like the British government. Okay, uh, the Syrian government and its allies, Russia. Um, and it's been found that over 90% of the airstrikes uh, that have been seen to date, uh, according to spokesman John Kirby in uh, October 2015, 90% of those airstrikes were not targeting ISIS or Jabhat al-Nusra areas. 90% of those strikes were targeting smaller, less known groups that do not have the same reputation for extremism. Thank you. Um, I'd like a response to that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that this is absolutely unfounded report. I think the Russians and Americans, you know, I don't want to say what's my opinion, but I think that even, even um, you know, the, the spokesperson of the State Department said it's very difficult for us to uh, separate between Jabhat al-Nusra and the, the other group and to say who is, um, uh, you know, who is an extremist and who is not. And I would like just to remind you that when the Russians and Americans agreed on the truce or on the cessation of hostilities, as they call it, John Kerry himself said, anyone who doesn't uh, abide by this cessation is going to be hit very strongly by us, by the Americans and the Russians. But unfortunately, they didn't, uh, they didn't do that. I think you have to be on the ground to see how uh, kidnapped people have been sold from one group to another, including the two Christian clergymen who were kidnapped on the borders of Turkey, and they were kidnapped to one group, and they ended up with, with very different groups. Once you are in the no-man's land where the terrorists are, it's very difficult to tell who is who. But I can tell you that uh, ISIS, Al-Nusra, Jaysh al-Fatih, Ahrar al-Sham, Jaysh al-Islam, they are definitely all terrorist group. They are all butchering, kidnapping, uh, hitting, destroying uh, an institution. And, and I would like to make just one clarification, that these people have nothing to do with Islam. I am a Muslim woman, and I read the Quran, and I know that those one major objective of this terrorism is to distort the image of Islam in the eyes of Western people. Islam, like Christianity, like Judaism, is a religion of love. Even the Prophet Muhammad was not given the authority to, to, to punish anybody for not being a Muslim. How could these people kill anybody who is not a Wahhabi, who is not a terrorist like themselves? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, Please introduce yourself again, that way everybody knows. Shala Sadigi from Voice of America, Persian TV, for uh, Dr. Shaban question. Um, Syrian government has enjoyed the uh, support of its ally, Iranian government, uh, f for a long time, uh, fighting the opposition, especially the Quds Force. But they have suffered, the Quds Force has suffered a lot of losses, uh, and the uh, Iranian government is sending ordinary army troops there to help the President Assad. Has there been any discussion between the Iranian government and uh, Bashar Assad regarding the future support of the military support from Iran? And uh, do you think uh, they are sort of uh, cooling down on supporting military as strong as before? Well, if you allow me, uh, Madam, to correct just uh, one word, they are not fighting opposition. They are fighting terrorists. Uh, Iran and Syria and Russia and Hezbollah are fighting terrorists uh, on the ground. 
uh, our, again, our relation with Iran is a historic relation. And I would like to remind you also that when uh, the war on Iran started by Saddam Hussein, Syria was the only country who stood against Saddam Hussein, the only Arab country and the only country when Saddam Hussein was helped and fed with weapons and armaments from the Gulf states and from the United States of America. We knew that Saddam is wrong and that he is attacking a, 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 a sovereign country which he has no right to. So our relation with Iran is based on principle, on human rights, on sovereignty, on, on international legitimacy, and it's not a, a by chance that the Iranians and the Hezbollah and Russia are supporting us. They are supporting us as friends, but they are supporting us also on a point of principle Last in a small global alliance against ISIS and against Al-Qaeda. I go back to the title, wonderful title that Gafta put to this uh, lovely meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Please introduce yourself again. Is, is it working? Okay. Wajj Waqfi from Al Jazeera. Dr. Shaban, I just want to ask as a follow up on the sanctions question when was the last time you were here in the United States? Have you been in the United States since 2011? Uh, and Dr. Kuba, a quick question for you. How old is Gafta, your organization? Thank Very you. Very good. I will answer this question. But let no, me I haven't you. been. Uh, I, I, uh, the last time I was in the United States is a good question. Thank you for it. It's in 2005 when I was a minister of expatriates. And I arrived there as a minister to see Syria expatriate and they kept one of my assistants for two hours in, in, in another room without me knowing why and, and what they should do and since that time I decided that I do not want to visit the United States although I received many invitations but I have an integrity and I'm not ready to be humiliated at any airport thank, thank you, you. Uh, I want to ask the last question to Dr. Shaban tell us about your Nobel Prize I know like you have the Nobel Prize a little bit tell us about it well, I was, uh, I was one of 1,000 women who were nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize uh, in 2005. Uh, I'm very proud. We went a long way. We made exhibits. Uh, we made conferences. And uh, we, ha we have uh, over 50 Arab women uh, from the Arab world who were nominated because of their work uh, for peace and because of the many years they spent in pursuit of peace. This only brings me to the strike contradiction between the European Union decision and the United States decision not to uh, consider me as a peace advocate while I am. I have always been and I always will be. And I hope we, live, we, we shall live in a world where the media performs a better role. I can't thank you enough in GAFTA for allowing me for this opportunity. But I would like to, to, to tell all your respectable audience, this is the least thing that should be done is to communicate with each other, to ask other questions, and to hear each other answers so that we reach the truth and we do not keep uh, walking and watching a mirage rather than finding out the truth. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dr. Shaban, and have a good night. Thank and you very much. Uh, the last uh, uh, comment from... Um,